the topic of my uh, speech today is uh, surviving the digital age that we live in, right? So uh, our generation is really a unique generation. Uh, uh, in the history of mankind, our generation is the only generation which has seen the amount of technological change in the last 10 years that no other generation has seen in their lifetimes. Right from the advent of internet towards the late 90s to social media in the mid-2000s and smartphones in the last four or five years, the amount of technological change that we have gone through has really baffled us. So most of those good changes are essentially for making our life comfortable. For example, we are uh, connected with a much wider set of friends than uh, what our parents' generation was. Like we are connected with our, uh, with our colleagues, with our friends of school, uh, which we would have definitely lost, lost in touch with. We are connected with our uh, friends from colleges, from apartment complexes, whole hobby groups. You, you name it, you know, we have WhatsApp groups for those things, right? And sometimes even part of groups which we don't want to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> like family groups, where you can see kids' photographs from all your uh, distant relatives. Yeah, so all that is really great. So as per uh, a research done by Facebook, on an average, a uh, Facebook user has 338 connections. Can you believe that? 338 connections. And top 15% of the Facebook users have more than 500 connections. That's how widely connected we are, right? Uh, according to a survey done uh, by Common Sense Media among the teenagers, almost 50% of them felt that social media really strengthens their relationships. You know, uh, almost 29% of them thought that uh, social media made them feel much more extroverted. And just look at the nature of social media, you know. Some kids, they take time to open up. They can, op they can express themselves much better in a, in a media where, which is kind of a, hides them behind the pry eyes of their uh, friends who are, who are judgmental against them. But essentially, it gives them that space to uh, expand themselves and express themselves, right? Now, uh, according to a research done uh, at the uh, University of Queensland, uh, the social media uh, and the interactions uh, help people, uh, help, help these children uh, be less lonely. Uh, the, according to them, the children today, the teenagers today, are less lonely than uh, what teenagers were about 10 years back. So isn't that great for the mental and uh, you know, the social well-being of uh, our generation or the next generation? <coughs> but among all these good things, there are a few things, uh, the few subtle things which uh, we do not notice about the impact of social media on our habits and our cognitive, uh, you know, cognitive health. For once, social media has really fragmented our attention span. Uh, you know, we are we are become much kind of shorter attention uh, span in, in most of the things that we do. Uh, and if you look at the the way all these social media applications are designed, the the way the uh, all your uh, emails and chats are, are designed, all of them are really designed to attract your attention to the ma to the to the extent that their success is dependent on how successful they are in capturing your 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 attention. Uh, for example, the number of likes on YouTube or uh, number of views on a particular web, web page, or number of uh, you know, uh, the, the feeds that, that you get on a Facebook. All these are metrics which are, which are uh, very religiously tracked by these companies to assess the, the, the success of those applications. Uh, and also, uh, from, the social, uh, from the social media's uh, uh, perspective, it is really addictive. Uh, you know, if, you, if you look at it, uh, you know, if, uh, it really uh, uh, Keeps you going back again and again to those to those uh, to those uh, applications. Uh, and the essential reason for that is the way our mind works. So every time you check an email or you look at a WhatsApp message, there's a slight amount of dopamine uh, which gets released in your mind, and that dopamine is associated with a sense of achievement. So essentially, every time you check an email, you get a sense of a sense of you get a uh, you know the dopamine, which is a feel good factor, and you get a sense of achievement. But is that really a true sense of achievement? Uh, what, what do you achieve by checking an email or getting a WhatsApp? So essentially what's happening to you is that you are getting a sense of achievement without having achieved anything, <laughs> right? So, and that can be really dangerous, right? So, uh, now what, what's the importance of focus <coughs> in our lives? Now, according to a study done by a, a, a professor at the University of Georgetown, uh, his name is uh, Cal Newport, and he is the author of a book called uh, Deep Work. In the times to come, focus is going to be the new IQ. The success of people going forward would depend on how well they are able to focus, just the way it used to, the IQ used to be the success measure in the, in the past generations. So 
So, so knowing, knowing all this, if you allow social media and, uh, and the internet really to make your uh, attention span fragmented as a knowledge worker, it is similar to suggesting smoking to an athlete. Isn't that so? Right? So now what can you do? So you're, you're in the middle of such an imbalanced situation, so what can you do? So hopefully not everything is lost. Uh, for example, uh, for once, what you can do is turn off all your notifications. So there was an experiment uh, done uh, uh, by Jake Snap, who, uh, who promoted a movement for uh, distraction-free iPhones. And he recommends that for 24 hours, just for 24 hours, don't look at your chats, don't look at your emails, don't look at any of the Infinity apps, right? Remove all the things from your phone which you think are not required, or which they reach out to you. You should reach out to your phone rather than phone reaching out to you. So use them, use the things that the way you want to use them and see the impact on your life. You will feel much calmer and much more in control of your, of your life. Se secondly, uh, uh, secondly uh, you know, attention is a muscle. It needs to be exercised. So engage into things which helps you build attention. Things like exercise, uh, you know, uh, do meditation, do journaling. Anything which requires you to fo have a focused time and have a uh, distraction-free uh, time is something which kind of helps you uh, improve your focus. Thirdly, uh, you know your, your time is precious. You know, save it uh, the way uh, you will save your money. Uh, so treat your time as an investment portfolio, right? Uh, that would mean now that uh, you would have to disappoint people who think that their issues are worth your time. But then, uh, you know, uh, if you uh, if you you have you you cannot be reactive about your time. You have to really be more intentional about how you spend your time. And uh, lastly, uh, work in sprints. Uh, dedicate 60 to 90 minutes of your time and focus on single thing. Uh, in the beginning of the day, plan your day and commit to doing the things that you that you you you, uh, you plan for. So essentially, uh, own your attention. So you should own your attention. You should own where you are focusing and what you are doing. Right. So uh, to conclude, uh, social media is like uh, a buffet of gourmet food. The problem is you will always end up overeating, <laughs> right? So if you really want to make an impact in this world, uh, you know, shut down that smartphone, uh, close all those browser tabs, roll up your sleeves, and get back to focus work. Thank you.